Felix Rosenquist, for the last couple of years, Robin Miller and I have happily felt like your American press agents telling folks, once you get here, this kid's going to be for real. I know you're a little bit worn out and knackered after your first IndyCar race. Tell me what it's like running up front, making a bold pass on Will Power. Nice little statement there, Felix. You let folks know this is for real. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm here to, to fight in the front, you know, that's always my target and uh, yeah, it was great fun. My NTT Honda was just brilliant out there and uh, yeah, I just have to thank my team first of all, the Chip Ganassi Racing for putting me in this great situation, uh, fighting, you know, up front already in my first race. I think I couldn't do that without them, so big thanks. Uh, yeah, it, it was fun, like uh, in the beginning I had really good pace, mm. uh, much more than I expected and it could be also that the, the more experienced guys sort of chilled out a little bit in the okay, beginning and you know, I, I'm used to more short races so <laughs> uh, maybe I took it out too, too early but you know I had the speed and I went for it and it was a kind of interesting pass on, on power there. It was a lot of marbles offline which didn't make that easy and a little bit of a flat spot but uh, that, that stint was very good even with that flat spot we continued to pull away. Uh, then the pit stops didn't really go brilliantly, like uh, I think it was more up to me, I sort of struggled to get away a little bit. Uh, and then the exit of my second pit stop, I almost like... There were some fast hands involved. Yeah, like me and Power almost had a coming together there and I honestly, this is one of the things you have to learn, like I'm not sure what the rule was there but I'm pretty sure my spotter said I was clear and it could have been a misunderstanding and you know it's not easy from up there. Uh, but. I was sure that Will would give me the space, but you know, I have to read what what's actually actually the rule there. But uh, yeah, we lost some ground there. I think that's where I lost Scott, uh, and he had a really good run there because he got past and sort of got free air for a while. See you, man. Uh, yeah, and from there on, we sort of just ran around in a train. And honestly, like the last 30 laps, I was really worn out. I had some issue with my shoulder. Yeah, you like said your my, seat wasn't... Yeah. was aggravating. There's no big handshakes uh, yeah. after this race. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was. it's a tough race, man, Like especially the first one of the, of the season. It's, it's the longest race I've ever done and yeah, it's just really physical to drive these cars uh, and you, you have to drive one race to really understand it. But uh, yeah, the winter training has paid off and you know, it allowed us to, to fight up there and uh, yeah, you know, I'm Maybe a little, not looking really happy right now, but I think in a couple of hours when I look back at it, it's you know it's been a good day. Colton Herta, your second IndyCar race. The driver is immediately in front of you at the finishing order. 2016 series champion Simon Pagano ahead of him, multiple race winner James Hinchcliffe. If I'm looking at a rookie start to your campaign, P8, I'm hoping you're happy, my man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am very happy. Obviously, it, it could have been better. I, I touched the wall out of turn three on the restart, and I, I dropped back from whatever we were in 10th all the way back to like 18. Yeah. So, unfortunately, that that kind of sucked. And uh, but yeah, we had we had really good pace. You know, we had, we had pace to be up there in the top five. Let's talk about that having to move forward again. So you're having to do some of that on track. Hopefully, yeah. a little bit on pit lane, a lot pit of stops, it was and pace, such. Yeah. What's that process like, though? Because you don't do that in Indy Lights. There's, you know, that's not something you've been accustomed to, overcutting, undercutting, and you yeah. name it. Yeah, it's 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 huge. You know, most of the racing you see in Indy cars is, is in the pits and out of the pits and opening laps, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. You know, obviously a, a big thing to, to adjust to is cold tires and getting up to speed really quick and learning how to use overtake and when to use it to to your advantage and obviously not use it up so you have some at the end. Spoke with Felix Rosenquist to start. He looked like he not only did 110 laps, but also got in a fist fight. He was just completely worn out. How are you feeling on a 80 degree humid day here in Florida after your race? Oh, I'm what's, pretty worn out. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's, what's complaining for those who might never drive an Indy car? Definitely the hands. That's kind of what you get at the street circuit is, is the kickback in the car and the steering wheel always, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people say the steering wheel is always trying to be ripped out of your hands and, and you know it's, I was always like oh whatever we'll see and, oh man the thing just wanted to go straight it did not want to turn but um, I think we had really good balance you know I think I think it, it's a little frustrating for me I'm happy we've got a top 10 in the debut but I think we really should have been in the top five we were so quick this weekend 
I'm glad you're not happy with any result, nor should you. If you even if you win, you're probably thinking of things you could have done better. Yeah. Let's close on the general performances of these next generation IndyCar drivers like you today. Felix in fourth, you next up in eighth. Behind you, Santino, Jack Harvey behind him. Again, a lot of the, lot of the guys are going to be carrying this series in the years to come, making a great statement in round one. Yeah, yeah, I just wish we could have qualified in that spot because, you know, I was, I was so happy to make it into the fast six and then... So you would have been the fat, uh, yeah, I mean, that would have been, that so would have been the story. To be knocked out. Um, and, and I think the thing a lot of people didn't know is, like, I obviously blocked Charlie, it was pretty obvious, but, um, you know, that, that, that next lap kind of screwed, it screwed me because I tried to get out of the way, so that next lap wasn't fast, it was actually my second lap on reds, which no one else did that, so... Yeah. Um, Obviously, there was a little bit more time in the bag, so we'll see if we can unleash that in Dakota. So if we're talking frequent flyer miles, 23rd to 9th for Santino Ferrucci. Not your first IndyCar race, got to do a couple last year, but your true proper start to rookie season. It seemed to me like you should be happy. You're sweating, but this is you should be happy, and boy, you're among a bunch of rookies who really made a statement today. Oh yeah, I mean, uh... I'm sweating. My, my arms seized up on me. You know, we, we drove so hard. I mean, uh, when we came in, we were cycling through the pits, and uh, Mike, Mike Cannon, head strategist, head race engineer, was like, all right, code brown. I'm like, oh, wait, no, code diarrhea. I was like, what? Repeat that oh, one more Lord, time. Here we go. I was like, all right, so that means I need to save an extra two tenths per lap than our worst scenario. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we made it happen. And we were still pretty quick while doing it, and uh, the guys had a hell of a stop, and we were able to pit and finish the race in the ninth spot. Tell us about that march forward. Uh, obviously, a couple drivers had some adversity, but you don't recover that many positions without doing a lot of passing. No, I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of waiting. I probably only passed one car. We did a lot on pit strategy and using our overtake and undercutting people. You know that that was crucial. I mean, when we when we came out of the pits, we had to have stellar pace. I mean, we couldn't make any mistakes. We had to drive as hard as we could because passing here is it, probably the hardest track I've had to deal with on the IndyCar calendar mm -hmm. by far. So I mean, we we did we made it work with strategy. We undercut a ton of cars. We kept our nose clean at the start of the race, which was super important. And when we cycled out, we cycled out ahead of everybody, and we just stayed there. 